Greetings to all. I am Dr. Akanksha and I thank you all for watching the last video, The Structure of Skin. And I hope it was helpful. So I am here back with my second video, which is going to be about wood slap examination. So this examination is a very basic and a very useful examination in dermatology. So what all are we going to study today? First of all, this is the overview. We're going to study about the physics of wood slap examination, how to use the wood slap. Examination under wood slap, that is uh, how a lesion appears under wood slap examination and the pitfalls. First of all, physics. So wood slap was developed by Robert W. Wood in 1903. Because it was developed by wood, therefore the name Wood's Lamp. So when we study about a particular uh, instrument, it is very important for us to know the physics behind the instrument. So we're going to study that. So let us start. We have a high pressure mercury arc. So a high pressure mercury arc will emit some radiation that will pass through a Wood's filter and some long wave UV radiation will be emitted further. So what is this Wood's filter? So Wood's filter is made up of barium silicate with 9% nickel oxide. It is made up of barium silicate with 9% nickel oxide. Now what is its function? Because I have used the word filter here, so obviously it is doing some filtering. So it will filter all the visible rays. It will filter all the visible rays. So the UVA radiation that is emitted by the Woods filter will be invisible. It will be invisible, not visible to the naked eye. The wavelength of UV light is 320 to 400 nanometer and it will peak at 365 nanometers. Now what happens when a photon hits the skin? What is a photon? We know that light is considered as a wave as well as a particle. So the particle that makes up light is known as photon. So when a photon hits the skin, there will be three things that can happen. First of all, the photon is reflected away. So this is the skin surface. This is the incident photon and it is being reflected away. This is the first possibility. The second possibility is it is absorbed. So this is the skin surface, this is the photon, incident photon, and it is being completely absorbed by the skin. The third is, it is scattered deeper into the skin. So how is it, so what is happening? This is the skin surface, this is the incident photon. Some of it is scattered, the rest is reflected back. So now the next question is, what is fluorescence? When we examine a lesion under the wood slab, we see fluorescence. Now, what is the reason for this fluorescence? What happens is that the incident light, that is the light of short, shorter wavelength, is 340 to 400 nanometers. So, when it is the incident uh, ray, when it, when it hits the skin, some of it is absorbed. So some of it is absorbed and while absorption happens, some of the energy is lost. Energy is lost. So now the ray that shall be emitted will be of low energy. It will be of low energy. But because it is of low energy, it will be of a higher wavelength and therefore it will be visible to the naked eye. So we have an incident light which is of a shorter wavelength. And then we have the emitted light, which is of longer wavelength and visible. So this is fluorescence. We put in a light which was invisible and we get the result which was visible. This is fluorescence. Now the next, uh, how to use wood slab. So ideally the wood slab is allowed to warm up for one minute. Okay. And whenever we do a wood slab examination, it is to be examined in a dark or a windowless room. The examinant should get dark adapted to see the contrast clearly. The reason for this is that whenever we come from a lighted room, our pupils are usually constricted. Whenever we come from a lighted room, our pupils are usually constricted. So we need the pupils to dilate a little so that we can see better. 
so this is the adaptation that is required so whenever you come into the room wait for a few minutes and then examine under the woods lamp the light source should be four to five inches from the lesion you should avoid washing the area before examination the reason for this will be discussed and any topical liniments that have been applied are to be wiped off they are not to be washed away so what will happen on examination now on examination wood slab will respond differently to epidermal pigmentation and dermal pigmentation if there is any variation in the epidermal uh, in the epidermal pigmentation it will become more apparent so when you see a variation in the epidermal pigmentation under wood slab it will be more apparent for example vitiligo in vitiligo there is loss of epidermal melanin the melanin that is present in the epidermis we know the structure of the skin so we know that there is a epidermis when the melanin is absent in epidermis it is vitiligo so when vitiligo is examined under wood's light it will be exaggerated the lesion of vitiligo will be exaggerated now similarly we have a condition known as the nevus anemicus it is also a white colored lesion of the skin and it is due to dermal vasoconstriction we know that we have blood vessels in the dermis so there will be dermal vasoconstriction due to which nevus anemicus will happen but when we examine nevus anemicus under wood's light it will disappear so we can see that the take home message is that variation in epidermal pigmentation will be more apparent under wood's lamp however any variation in dermal pigmentation will be less apparent so this is the take home message now we have the uses of wood slide how a particular lesion will appear under the wood slab examination so tinea capitis uh, will appear as green fluorescence it will appear as green fluorescence then we have pityriasis versicolor it will appear yellow both of these are fungal infections then we have erythrasma and acne erythrasma and acne will appear coral pink this is a very important question so erythrasma will appear coral pink erythrasma is caused by corine bacterium minutissimum and erythrasma and acne will appear coral pink then we have pseudomonas pyocyanea it will appear yellowish green now scabies so if we use a fluorescein solution it will fill the burrows and the burrows will be visible we know that in scabies we have burrows so if we use a fluorescein solution it will fill the burrows and the burrows will be visible now the porphyria disorders so all the porphyrias will appear red under a food slab examination however in different porphyrias we need to know what is to be examined for example in porphyria cutanea tarda you need to examine the urine feces and the blister fluid in erythropoietic porphyria you need to examine the teeth and in protoporphyria you need to examine the blood all of which will emit red fluorescence then we have the pigmentary disorders such as vitiligo ash leaf macule so ash leaf macule is seen in tuberous sclerosis so this will be accentuated because it is a epidermal uh, pigmentary disorder whereas dermal pigmentation will become less apparent for example nevus anemicus then there are certain drugs and chemi chemicals that can be detected in the tissues for example tetracycline in teeth and sebum and mepacrine in nails so these can also be examined under the wood slab now uh, we have a very uh, atypical type of uh, use of the wood slab we add fluorescein to certain topical medications to investigate the site of application for example we suspect a patient has not been using his medication so we'll add fluorescein to the topical medication and then we'll investigate the site of application if he's applied the medication there will be fluorescence so fluorescence will be present if he has applied the medication now we'll discuss about some tumors the tumors will appear red but this will occur only in a specific condition that is when photodynamic therapy is being given it is usually given from for squamous cell carcinoma so what is photodynamic therapy in photodynamic therapy we use a photosensitizer photo sensitizer so uh, in photodynamic therapy we use a photosensitizer like 5 ala 5 alpha levulinic acid then we examine uh, when then we put in a incident light of a wavelength 
it could be any wavelength so when the photosensitizer is sensitized by the light of a particular wavelength it releases oxygen and this oxygen kills cells this is the basic principle behind the use of photodynamic therapy so when photodynamic therapy is given in ssc and we use 5 ala a compound known as protoporphyrin 9 is produced and this is responsible for the fluorescence the red colored fluorescence so the basic uh, take home message was that tumors will produce a red colored fluorescence if they if a photodynamic therapy is being given for that particular tumor uh, okay now in erythrasma the red color is due to conversion of 5 ala to protoporphyrin 9 by corynebacterium minutissimum so you can see that same product is being produced protoporphyrin 9 is being produced by corynebacterium minutissimum which was the causative organism of erythrasma and a coral red color was seen a coral red color was seen so finally we have the pitfalls because this is not a very uh, foolproof test so there will be certain pitfalls so most of the fungi they don't fluoresce and therefore a negative test does not exclude the diagnosis of tinea capitis we studied that in tinea capitis there was green fluorescence however even if there is no green fluorescence it is not a definitive test now some reflection is seen even in the presence of scaly dermatosis so you know you can mistake it for some other disease a white shirt or coat may be a distraction because uh, we use optical brighteners in shirts and coats and they fluoresce very strongly and in erythrasma the pink color is due to porphyrins so there will be a negative test if the skin is washed prior to the examination so that is why it was suggested that you don't need to wash the skin prior to examination you just need to wipe the skin so in erythrasma pink color due to the porphyrins uh, will be will be washed if you wash it so there will be a negative test so that can be confusing now here are two photos this is the conclusion so just two photos for you to remember which are important this is erythrasma coral pink type of color coral red type of color can be seen and this is vitiligo so in vitiligo we can clearly see that the lesion is being accentuated the lesion is being accentuated so i thank you all for watching this video and any suggestions for the upcoming videos are welcome whatever topics you might want me to discuss they'll be very welcome and do not forget to like subscribe and share and i thank you